We've already talked about the risk of sepsis. Sepsis can certainly occur in, in chorioamnionitis. Um, and the risk of sepsis, the, the, the ultimate risk of sepsis to the baby, and, and unfortunately is very common, is fetal loss, fetal demise, or, or a miscarriage. More likely or more frequently is the phenomenon of chorioamnionitis and, and phunicitis. And there are a couple things that can happen in chorioamnionitis. Um, the most likely uh, theory is that when they, especially the fetal side of the amniotic sac becomes infected, it triggers an inflammatory response in the fetus, not the mother, but the fetus. So the fetus begins to release large quantities, massive quantities of inflammatory markers, cytokines, interleukin, tissue necrosis factor. And the importance of those are, is that those are particularly toxic to brain cells. It will kill the brain cells. So children that end up with this inflammatory response as a result of chorioamnionitis will have diffuse, widespread white brain matter loss in the brain. In phunicitis, you can also get the inflammatory response, so it's somewhat of a double whammy. You can end up with the same type of white matter damage as a result of the inflammatory response to phunicitis, but you can also, in very severe cases of phunicitis, actually have damage to the muscle cells in the walls of the vessels in the cord. So again, you usually have two veins and one artery in the cord, which is feeding the baby nutrients and oxygen and taking away waste products. And what happens when the phunicitis actually damages the cord, it decreases the perfusion to the baby, the delivery of oxygen and nutrients, and you can end up with widespread and very profound brain damage as a result of phunicitis.